went to I was up all night watching a couple streamers that you know came by check my channel out dropped me a raid and a follow and I also really like my content one of them was Freak on Nasty and Ramirio Vidal but those are two people who raided me two days ago on my stream where I streamed for like eight hours straight it was a pretty interesting stream because I felt like I was learning a lot of new things well, let's go ahead and hop into this next game Get him with the good luck, have fun. Avatar is Squee, Mortal Treasure. I guess I would love to go first. Alright, so I think everyone knows that I'm a Tron player. So it's like, uh... Not too easy to surprise anybody. I think the only thing that might be a surprise to people is the fact that I am not streaming this time around. Because typically I do. This also means though that... I'm not getting any input from anyone else. More so than I typically get. Alright. Hmm. I think space fillers like right now is when people actually want to actually be actually have a lot of people in chat who are very talkative that way you could pass time by you know having casual conversations on the side okay my guy Seems to be taking a minute there to get started. But you know what? They could be playing a Burnick. It's like the game is over in two minutes. But if they are playing a Burnick, let's see. Do my sideboard. I did put one copy of Karn Liberated on the sideboard. Because Karn is amazing, but at the same time, he is just not a board wipe. He's like surgical. Mm, surgical removal or a surgical removal card it's all the same but yeah since he's so precise with what oh excuse me because he's so precise at what he does it leaves him open to being targeted pretty quickly and he does not fare well against multiple monsters monsters multiple creatures And when I start meshing together Magic the Gathering and Digimon and all them other animes, you know I've been awake too long. But yeah, this is what my sideboard looks like right now. Okay, opponent's back. They said you too, and after I said good luck, have fun. Obash, so it looks like they're probably on burn. Let's go ahead and mulligan that hand. And I only have one piece of Tron here, unfortunately. The game has been freaking the heck out recently, and I'm not too sure why. That works. I can't move my cards around for some odd reason. Ah, uh, that makes no sense. Okay, this hand I will keep. I don't get it. Okay, knowing that they're on a bosh, doubling season is probably too slow. And I have to put one more card back. Hmm. It's a toss up between. Since they're playing Abash, I have to try to play and just get Tron as soon as possible. I could keep the land and put the Serum Powder back. But that would mean I would not be able to get Tron on turn 3. I mean, not Tron, but get to 4 mana on turn 3. Even though it would not be usable. So I think I just have to put the Serum Powder here.
that is saying that maybe I expect them to destroy Tron Land, but we'll see. Either ways, I think it's a risky keep regardless, so Let's see if this this has the right payoffs. Hey, yeah, I'm trying to move my my lands around. It's not working. Not too sure why. Firebolt, two damage to any target. Okay. I'm not gonna crack this yet because I want to see if I draw into both of Nessa or Sylvan the Scribe or Ancient Stirrings. So I do have quite a few options there. Alright, do I get lucky off the top? Mm, nope. At least I did not get one of them yet. Okay, now I have two of multiple Tron lands. Mm, let's go ahead and play this. And let's go ahead and play that. And let's go ahead and pass turn. Next turn I do have four mana, which means I can play a Kyan Great Creator. And the go get Trinosphere. One steady dealing damage to me there. Last zone on one. Blood Moon. I'm okay with Blood Moon though. At least okay-ish with Blood Moon. Because it doesn't entirely shut my deck off. I will have been able to get Tron this turn. Okay, but since I don't have it, let's go... Great Creator here. And... Let's go get a Trinosphere. Oh, I need to go get something. Okay, so it looks like I can't... Okay, there it goes, I can move that. So I have four mana on board. I'm gonna have five mana next turn. Options here are Trinosphere, but since playing a lot of spells that cost less than three mana. I guess Trinosphere is actually pretty good since they are kind of like a burn deck anyways. But I'm thinking Walking Ballista will also be pretty good. But if I get Walking Ballista, I cannot play for two turns. And I think Walking Ballista here because it just has the biggest upside to it. If Karn dies, he dies, but at least with Walking Ballista, I'll be gaining life constantly. And Karn's dead. But that's also. Pretty close to the same thing as him gaining me 3 life because he absorbed that damage for me. Got a Sylvan Scrying there, let's go Victor Green. Let's go ahead and... and hmm, fetch a card here. I think what I want is... Either a forest or a blast zone. But blast zone cannot be activated anyways. I think I'll get a forest. And I'll go ahead and play the forest. So next turn I can cast Wormhole Engine. Downside is I'm also taking 4 damage here. Going back turn here. He went ahead and put a Bosch in hand. Then Soul Scar Mage. So he's already trying to look at ways to kill my Wormquill engine, so I will kind of need to draw into something else. Okay, six. Drawing into all his dust here is actually really good. Next turn I can use all his dust. Turn after that I can cast Emrakul. And that should be enough to get me there. And there's a Bosch coming out. Okay, he has two more cards left in hand. No attacks this turn. Awesome for me. Let's put a power plant. Have two of each strong land. I think they might just scoop after this. All his dust went off, but they... Oh, yep, they went ahead and scooped. Okay, so looking pretty good here, so... Obviously, Worm Coil Engine was amazing in that match. Put another Worm Coil in. 
since opponent is, you know, playing Blood Moon, it makes some of the tested a little bit easier to cast. Same thing for Bolas, but after that, three black mana in the devotion. I mean, three black mana, three black mana in the mana cost. Can't really count just one. All right, opponent is playing burn spells. They don't look like they're going super heavy on the burn yet, but going into next game, I'm expecting them to ramp up the burn a lot because I'm playing Tron. Okay, let's see what else. All the creatures are just amazing against burn, especially ones that help you go up on lands. Now I'm at 61 cards. Emrakul. I was able to get to the point where I could cast it that game, but it's unrealistic to cast it. Alright, so opponent is gonna be using Obosh. Alright, I guess I'll do what you know these pro streamers do here. Right now I'm downloading my video, my 8 hour stream I had the other day. Let's see. No, no, it's a bash something companion. Okay, there he is. Just unconverted mana cost. It does double that damage. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what I was trying to learn from that, but. Hey, professional players do it, you know, so why wouldn't I, right? Okay, the only thing that I don't know about here is if I should put the card liberated in. I think I could put this in. I can go down on card liberated. I still have planeswalkers that ultimately do crazy things. Only one I don't know about is Jace, Architect of Thought here. But he just wins the game if he goes off with doubling season. The other one just makes infinite tokens, but then if they cannot attack fast enough, then I'm just dead. So I think this is it. Right, let's see how this game goes. Let's see, I want to make sure... Yep. I did not leave any walking ballistas on the sideboard. Just had to make sure I didn't do that. I'll go ahead and keep this hand. Alright, so it's looking like two pieces of Tron. A third land. And two cantrips. Extremely good. Alright, turn one Soul Sky Mage. Looks like they're going really heavy on the just straight burn. Burn tactic here, which is not big. Let's put those to the other side. Okay. Soul Sky Mages. Mm. Might be saving his burn spells for when Wormcoil Engine comes out. Or not. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this for a green. We got a mine off the top there. Go play the mine. Play the Chromatic Star. Let's go sack this for a green again. Let's go use Ancient Stirrings. And it looks like we are off pretty great here, but let's see. On one hand, I want to take the Worm Coil Engine because it has a huge payoff to it. But at the same time, I do know that next turn they are able to play Blood Moon. And I think they're looking down to ensure that they actually get Blood Moon. So knowing that they get Blood Moon, let's see what my options are going to be. Trinosphere with Karn is going to be one in two turns. But besides that, I am going to need something else. So if Trinosphere is going to be what slows them down, that will put me at exactly 3-5 mana. And I'll need to get in one more mana, which I might be able to do with the Chromatic Star. So in a way, I have three more turns to see if I can draw into something to get me to cast Worm Coil Engine. So I think that's a safe bet. 
but that is also if I don't die to burn damage before then. Season Pyromancer. I was very highly expecting a Blood Moon there. Okay, Tron Online. Let's go do Worm Coil Engine because it's just good. We could do Worm Coil Engine this turn. Next turn, do Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, Board Wipe, and then they should concede if we get to that point. Blood Moon. Okay, so Blood Moon is what they casted there. It should mean that they don't attack though because I'll just be gaining life. Let's see. Go up to four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. And go ahead and play Kind Grave Creator here. Let's go get Eternosphere. Which mean that they means that they will not be able to double spell. At least that's what I'm looking forward to in the future turns. I uh, will also go ahead and attack to gain some life. Leave my Karn undefended, but at the same time... It also becomes a target. So in a way it's like it almost gains me life by just having it out here because they have to attack it. Knowing that I have a wish board of different stuff I could get. Or at least that's the hope. I think the worm coil getting me life is going to be the biggest difference maker here. Okay, they played another land, so they have two cards in hand still. Let's go ahead and skip to my turn on here. Hmm. Let's see if he's considering his outs here. Doesn't have blue mana. Only red mana on board, so what could be stuck in his hand might be blue cards that help with card draw, maybe. Okay, lightning bolt. Maybe another lightning bolt. I think he was just debating there if he should lava dart, so he's making it to where I gain less life. I think he okay, so he did kill Kyle there. Okay, he has zero cards in hand. That puts me at three, four, five. Okay, let's sacrifice this for a green. Let's see what I want to get at this point. Okay, that'll be six right there. I could go get a silent arbiter. And still continue to attack. He can also sacrifice his mountain though. And flash back the lava dart. See, there's no way he can double spell because he doesn't have the spells to double spell. Hmm. 
So if I cast Trinisphere here, it's going to be hurting me more than it's helping me. In a way, this should be an easy choice, but for some reason I'm stuck on it. Like gaining more life next turn is just good. I think I'll go ahead and fetch Tor Mod Script. Since I have another card in hand anyways. So if I fetch Tor Mod Script, it'll make it to where he has to use the Lava Dart this turn. And it will not cause any extra damage or prowess damage to me. And from there, let's go ahead and play Expedition Map. Alright, let's go ahead and attack for your two. Actually, I can just not attack here. Next turn I have 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. Let's just not attack. Because if he attacks me, then I end up gaining 2 life, he loses a creature. And then I potentially get two creatures, which I don't think he wants. I put a Bosch in hand, so he's trying to make it to where all his creatures here deal double the amount of damage pretty much. Let's see, how strong is a Bosch? He is a 3-5. Okay, so he's attacking Karn anyways. Nice. Okay, let's go ahead and block this one right there. That way I can get two creatures because Wormcore will die. Okay, he chose to deal damage to the Wormcore and didn't kill it. Okay, so now I'm sitting at... Six mana total. Let's see, to play a boss, he needs five mana. So let's see, one, two, three, four. Let's go Karn Great Creator again. Then let's go ahead and do... Liquid Mellow Coating. And uh, doing his upkeep, I want to be able to deactivate his land. Let's see, I have played a land this turn already. This time, uh, however, I think I am not going to attack. Let's see, if I attack, I gain life, but I lose iron. Next turn, I have 7 mana. Plus, I can play Serum Pod, which means the turn after that I can use Ugin in the Spirit Dragon. So I think I'll just sit back here and not attack. Because there really is no... Oh man, I completely forgot to play my Liquid Metal Coating. Okay, I was feeling like I was forgetting something there, but that makes sense. But missing Liquid Metal Coating means that I'm able to go up on lands more reliably and get to Ugin. Shattering Spree. Destroying the Death Touch 1. Prowse Triggers going off everywhere. I don't know why he destroyed the Death Touch 1 now. Oh, he's gonna replicate it and destroy the Lifelink 1 as well. Yep. Oh, he's trying to destroy my expedition map too. Can't be having all that happening here. Alright, let's go get a forest. Okay, so it should be swinging two of them at Karn, Great Creator here. 
And of course I took two damage as well. Alright, so let's see. Let's play a forest. So that's four, five, six, seven. Need one more mana. Let's go Oath of Nissa. See what we draw into here. Okay, I got another one. Another worm coil. Let's get the worm coil out of here because he seems to have so much fun playing with the worm coils. Let's put it back. Okay, so you played Obash there. Didn't attack. Okay, well for me, I am definitely going to... Let's see. Let's go draw a card first. See if we get anything good here. More lands. That means next turn I'm guaranteed to be able to play Ugin. Let's see. Damage, so right now. This would deal 6, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage is what you can do right now. So the best option is to just not attack. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight men on board. I could play Trinisphere, then, or I could play Serum Powder. Hmm. I think I'll just do Serum Powder just to get additional men on board, and then do a Trinisphere so he can not double spell. Liquid metal coating is kind of stuck in my hand anyway, so I'll just leave that where it is. Turn the sphere and make sure he can only cast one spell. Okay, I don't know if he's gonna attack here and hold back. Held back. Reward for me. Six, seven, need one more. Okay, he should concede to this. Alright, so... 2 was 0 so far in this league. That game took 27 minutes and it was going against someone playing Burn. But I think both me and my opponent did take quite some time there to really consider our plays. I think the thing that they learned right there is that when you're playing against Tron Walkers, Blood Moon does not save you. But anyways, peeps, I'm gonna go watch some anime. I'll catch y'all back for the next match.